Okay, and we're back. Class number two, online using your Chromebooks. Uh, we're going to go through the next part of our packet. We finished now the Torah Shebichtav, specifically the Tanakh. We talked about the Mishnah yesterday. Now we're going to move into the Gemara and the Rishonim. This is going to be the last section of our Misora unit before we have our first test. Um, I might as well throw that out there. There will be a test on this unit after we finish the Rishonim section. So here we go. Just to recap, we've done the Torah Shebichtav. Like we said, Torah Shebichtav and the words Tanakh, the word Tanakh are synonyms. Uh, the written Torah is made up of Torah, Nevim, and Ketuvim. That's right over here. Um, and then we had the Torah Shebe'al Peh that was not allowed to be written down. It was not written down for a considerable amount of time until in the year 200 CE, which you got from your last packet. You filled in that answer already. The Torah Shebe'al Peh was written down first as the Mishnah, the six Sidre Mishnah, the six sections, orders of the Mishnah, um, broken into Masechtot, um, Prakim, and Mishnayot. Now we move on. After the publication of the Mishnah, the period of the Tanaim officially ended. So if you were between the years 0 and 200 CE, and you were recorded in the Mishnah, or in the Midrashim, for example, you were a Tana. Uh, so when we're learning Mishnayot this year, all the opinions found in the Mishnah are the Tanaim. As soon as the Mishnah was written down, for the next 300 years, from approximately 200 CE, until 500 CE, those are approximate dates, the period of the Amorayim began. And what they did, their major contribution, was the commentary. They wrote a commentary on the Mishnah, otherwise known as the Gemara. Now it's important to remember the Amorayim didn't physically write down the Gemara. They were having discussions and as we're going to see on the next slide, explaining aspects of the Mishnah, it was eventually all of these explanations over this 300-year period from 200 CE to 500 CE, uh, all of those teachings were eventually collected by two great rabbis. And we'll move on to this final slide over here. They were um, gathered by Ravina and Ravashi. Ravina and Ravashi. Uh, they gathered these and collected and summarized these various teachings and put them into, um, and compiled them into the Gemara, which is, again, this very elaborate commentary in one aspect on the Mishnah. That commentary that was um, completed in approximately the year 500 CE um, and it's called the Talmud Bavli. In Eretz Yisrael, there was another Talmud that was being put together. That's the Talmud Yerushalmi. We will not be learning Yerushalmi this year. Uh, we'll be focusing on the Bavli. But let's go back. What exactly did the Amoraim do? Right? And this, on, in your packets, the question is, on a very basic level, what does the Gemara come to do? If you don't have enough space in the, in the um, box that I put, you can write below it or on the back. But the following three things were... Um, very important. These were three very important things the Amoraim did. Number one, they determined the reasons behind the Mishnah's rulings. Now that's really important. Um, sometimes the Mishnah would say something, but it doesn't give an explanation for what exactly and why exactly or how they came to those reasons uh, or those halachot. So the first thing the Amoraim did that are written down in the Gemara, they determined reasons behind the Mishnah's rulings. Number two, they applied the Mishnah's rulings to other cases. So for example, the Mishnah may be dealing with a specific case, um, but it didn't highlight or didn't deal with uh, a similar yet different case. So the Amorim took the Mishnah's ruling and applied it to more modern examples or different examples that the Mishnah didn't touch on. And finally, number three, in cases of Machloket, the Amorim decided, in many cases, on the Halacha and the established rules of who we follow. So for example, the rule of the majority versus the minority. Let's say, for example, in a Mishnah, you have the Chachamim that say one opinion, and one individual Tana, let's say Rabbi Meir says another opinion, the law in general follows the majority. Another example, Beit Shammai versus Beit Hillel. You may have seen those names in Mishnah that you learned last year. In general, the Halacha follows Beit Hillel. I believe there's only six examples where the Halacha follows Beit Shammai. So these various rulings were established by the Amoraim of how we paskin halacha, how we decide who we follow in halachic matters. So we already did this page over here of what Gemara is. 
I'd like you to write down on the bottom of your page, I didn't mention this as a specific question, but please write down that Gemara itself is typically broken down into two parts, Halacha and Agadita. Please write down those words on the bottom, and I'm going to explain them very briefly. So for this part, you'll have to hear me and just write it down afterwards. If you have to rewind this a couple times, that's okay. Halacha, right, the Halacha parts of Gemara, are the back and forth discussions amongst the Amoraim, back and forth fighting over different aspects of halacha or the laws. So the discussions about the various halachot and the conversations and the back and forth dialogue of halacha is the halacha section of the Gemara. But there is also a second section of Gemara, and that is the, oops, sorry, is the Agadita. The Agadita are the moral, ethical, and philosophical teachings of the Amorite. So these include explanations of difficult psukim in the Chumash, but this also teaches us all sorts of ethical ways, how we're supposed to live our lives, sometimes in the form of stories. There are a lot of stories in the Gemara. And also just moral teachings, like how we're supposed to live on a moral, ethical front. So please mention that. Write that on the bottom of your sheet, what halacha is and what a gadata is. Halacha, the back and forth legal discussions, right? legal uh, halachic back and forth. The agadata being all those moral, philosophical, ethical aspects of our Torah and how we're supposed to live our lives. Both are very important. So please write that down on the bottom or on the back of your sheet. Take a breather, and we're going to move to the next video on the Rishonim in just a moment's time.